The Nasdaq is underperforming the major averages again today as rising rates pressure the whole tech sector. Kathy Wood's ARK ETFs, which saw record inflows earlier this year, are getting whacked with the broader tech weakness. All five of ARK Invest's actively managed ETFs are now negative for 2021. But Kathy, welcome back to the show. Good to have you. Great to be here, Sarah. Thank you. It's been amazing to watch your rise and your funds rise over the last year, and yet the past few weeks have been absolutely brutal. The ARK Innovation ETF down 31% from, from the recent highs. How concerned are you about these rising interest rates and what that's doing to a lot of your high growth companies and the questions about valuations? Sure. Uh, well, we've been struck that uh, the market never priced in 0 0.5, 1 or 1.5 percent interest rates. Uh, we think the market never believed interest rates would stay down here. And so it, it over time, we believe, has used sort of a normalized three to five percent. Uh, so we, we don't think that is why the market is uh, correcting here. We do think the speed of the increase in interest rates is scaring people. Uh, it became very comfortable in a low interest rate environment, nothing much changing, the Fed has our back and so forth, uh, to, to become involved with the market. And I think uh, this has shaken uh, a lot of investors up, maybe, perhaps. And uh, I would say even in the bond market in particular, we've been in a 40-year bull market in bonds. So I think there's a lot of uh, confusion and uh, I, I think there's a little bit of paralysis here. I also think that uh, there is a very rapid rotation now into value stocks. We've seen energy up year to date, uh, 39%, financials up about 16%. Uh, those are traditional value sectors. Uh, and so I think that's been part of the reason for ARC's uh, setback. But if I could add a little perspective to this, this happened to us in the fourth quarter of 2016 as well. Uh, right after uh, President Trump was elected, uh, the stock market took off because tax rates were going to go down and so forth. And so the market started pricing in a very strong cycle, uh, which was correct. Uh, in that period of time, our, our strategies went negative. And what I said at the time and what I believe now is that the bull market was broadening out to incorporate value or more cyclical sectors. And I thought that was going to be very good news for our strategy longer run. The worst thing that could have happened to us was another tech and te telecom type bubble where the market narrowed, narrowed, so that only a few groups won. Uh, right now, the market is broadening out. And we think in an underlying sense, the bull market is strengthening and that will play to our benefit over the longer term. How about Tesla specifically, which, which is now off 37% from the recent highs, is down another more than 5 percent today. Everyone wants to know what your new price target is, Kathy, because the last time you gave that price target, it seemed crazy to a lot of people and then not so much when, when Tesla actually rocketed 700 percent. So yeah. where are you now on where that stock goes? Well, we're about to publish, I, I'm hoping it's within a week or two, our new forecasts. Our confidence in uh, Tesla has gone up for a number of reasons. One, it didn't lose share of the electric vehicle market when all of the traditional luxury brand names started bringing their own electric vehicles to market. Uh, now, we expect it will lose share, but our expectation is, was that its share would go from 17% at the end of 2018 down to 11% as more electric vehicles were coming out. Instead, what happened? Its share moved up to more than 20% and roughly 80% in the US market, 80% of electric vehicles. So that's the first source of confidence, market share up, not down. The second is autonomous. Uh, we believe that uh, Elon Musk, uh, we, who over the weekend tweeted out that he would offer, or Tesla would offer, uh, full service driving uh, to anyone who wanted it, uh, saw an incredible burst in demand. So for him to be able to do that suggests to us that he's going to be able to show us the way to autonomous much faster than most analysts and investors expect. So 
are are the probability we have put on uh, Tesla really winning the lion's share of the autonomous taxi network market in the United States also has gone up. So you might imagine the price targets have gone up considerably. I have a, a broader question on Tesla in a moment, Kathy, but, but quickly first, on, on self-driving technology, are you saying all of the revelations uh, and news from the company in the last couple of weeks has only improved your outlook on the company? Because some analysts, uh, based on the response to freedom of information request, uh, were underwhelmed by, by uh, the, out, the outlining that they're more like level two in terms of that technology than perhaps some expected uh, the, the announcement to be. Well, we believe uh, that Tesla has been doing this differently, uh, staging uh, the movement into autonomous differently from other companies like Waymo and Cruise Automation. Uh, and so I can understand wh why there's some confusion. Uh, we think that uh, their strategy is not market by market, ultimately, but national. Uh, and so uh, I, I think there's a, a misunderstanding about how they're going to market. Um, my broad question on Tesla, Kathy, and you have been so right on this company and so many other companies that, that you know, I, I sit here and think, who am I to even bother asking this question? But, but I think it is fair to compare things today to Amazon, uh, to, to people who were right to be bullish on Amazon as it, as it pulled back in 1999 for a couple of years because of where it is now. But it did take almost a decade for it to get back above its pre-pullback 99 peak. Uh, during a period of time when it continued to take market share, continued to grow revenues, continued to grow profit, but there was a nine-year period where the share price uh, was underwater. I is that not possible to apply to Tesla going here, even if you're absolutely right that the company's top and bottom lines continue to grow, continue to take share? Well, I know the Amazon story well because I uh, was living, eating, and breathing it the entire time. Uh, so what we saw in the tech and telecom bust was uh, the recognition that uh, we were not ready for prime time for a lot of the companies evolving at, the, at that time. And so there were a wave of bankruptcies uh, and, uh, and the psychology became, well, uh, many people thought that the internet was a figment of Wall Street's imagination and that no one would make any money off of it, and Amazon included. And the time period you're talking uh, about, Wilfred, was when... Um, Amazon basically was saying, look, we will, we will be as close to cash flow neutral as possible, uh, but we are going to turn every revenue uh, dollar we possibly can back into investing. That's how they won. But they did not show profitability, not any substantial profitability, but uh, often losses for, for many, many years. They just uh, believed that if they uh, if they invested aggressively at that time, that they would win the lion's share of the uh, online retail market. And that was absolutely right. I think uh, Tesla has already passed through that uh, uh, phase of its life. It did invest aggressively, and it has on four, uh, on four metrics, uh, it, it is leading the charge, so to speak. So battery technology costs lower than anyone else's out there and will remain lower. Uh, artificial intelligence chip, it designed its own. No one else has designed its own chip. chip. This is analogous to Apple in the day. Smartphone, uh, or no, cellular uh, companies, Nokia, Ericsson, and Motorola didn't see the future. Apple did. And yet it couldn't get Qualcomm or Intel to move quickly enough. It had to design its own chip. And of course, now Apple uh, basically accounts for the lion's share of all the profits from uh, smartphones in the world. We think this is going to happen uh, also with Tesla, maybe not worldwide because we know China wants its own champion. But that AI chip that, uh, that Tesla designed, our analyst said, uh, was four years ahead of where NVIDIA was at the time, and this was a couple of years ago. Uh, they have more data collected than any other company by orders of magnitude, not just by any other company, but by all other companies out there, uh, because the largest pool of data with the highest quality is going to win in the AI game. They have the largest pool of data, and finally, until very recently, Tesla was the only automobile manufacturer able to improve performance uh, of its cars with over-the-air software updates. I got my Model 3 in 2018. 
never had a problem except a wheel, a, a nail in the wheel, which they couldn't correct over the air, of course. Never a problem. So uh, what they've done is extraordinary. And I think uh, this is their market to lose. I think they're in a very, very different place also. We're not in the tech and telecom bust. We are 20 years later. All of the seeds for what is mm -hmm. happening now were planted back then. Now they're coming to fruition. Tesla off the session lows, down 4.8%. Kathy, if you would, stay with us because we're going to take a quick break and we have a lot to hit to when we come back, including crypto. I know you're a fan and some of your other holdings we saw right there on the wall, like Palantir and Square. Stay with us here on Closing Bell. Dow's up 472. We'll be right back with Kathy Wood. We're back with ARK Invest CEO Kathy Wood. Kathy, thanks for, for sticking around. I, I wanted to ask about Bitcoin, a big picture question over the next uh, decade. Do you think it will prove to continue to be correlated with risk assets or will it emerge to be negatively correlated in a way that you could argue gold perhaps has been over the long term or the dollar has been uh, in terms of uh, its correlation with stocks? What's been interesting about the correlations uh, Bitcoin to any other asset class is the correlations have actually been very, very low over time. In fact, the highest correlation is between Bitcoin and real estate. Now, the IRS taxes Bitcoin as property, but I don't think that's the reason for this correlation. It just so happens it's that. Uh, so we think that as it becomes a better accepted uh, new asset class, and, and we are seeing institutional movement into the space, and we're seeing the diversification of balance sheets in, into from cash into Bitcoin, we do think it will be, uh, it will behave, actually, I would say more like the fixed income markets, believe it or not. Uh, if you think about bonds from this level, you know, this idea of a 60-40 balanced portfolio is a bit problematic. We've been through a 40-year bull market in bonds. We would not be surprised to see this new asset class become a part of those percentages, maybe 60 equity, 20, 20. Uh, so I actually think that might be the biggest surprise here. Uh, I wanted to ask about fintech as well. I know you're a, a big believer there. And, and I wondered whether you look at the incumbent financial companies and banks in a different light than perhaps uh, you do the incumbent autos compared to Tesla or the incumbent retailers compared to Amazon 10 or 20 years ago. Are any of the traditional banks with all the investment they're putting into tech, whether it's Goldman with Marcus, City with their partnership with uh, Google or, or the investments the big banks have made into Zelle, whether any of those banks are investable as plays on fintech or are they all going to get crushed like certain retailers and autos have been? Well, uh, it's interesting that you say that. Um, we, we have often um, expressed uh, a point of view that there's old DNA and new DNA. It's very, it, when, when uh, the technology platforms shift, it's very hard for DNA uh, to shift from old to new. That said, you've seen with Walmart, you're going to have a Walmart, a Target, a, a Costco. So you'll have maybe two or three mega banks. And yes, a lot of them are investing aggressively now, which is what they should be doing. But we do believe that uh, the, the two of the biggest uh, uh, sectors that will be disrupted in, in the world today are the two that have been best performing this year, energy and financial services. So choose wisely and make sure you're on the right side of change. Make sure these companies are investing enough, have invested enough. So many companies simply uh, leveraged up to buy back shares and now they're facing this huge investment uh, mandate. Uh, so make sure, make sure that you invest in those that will be the survivors. And we do think that the carnage is going to be pretty significant in both the energy and the financial services sector long term. Now, uh, in a V-shaped recovery, and we think we're in a very strong recovery right now, they're going to do fine. They're going to do fine. And in fact, the yield curve uh, is um, very wide by recent standards. So uh, that should accrue to the benefit of financial services uh, broadly. Uh, so we're not saying that mm -hmm. this is a fake out short term, but we are saying long term, watch out. Kathy, just back to your fund's performance just recently and, and what we've been seeing. How are you navigating these heavy first inflows and now outflows? And, and, yes. my, and my other questions are related to that is, is why are you selling liquid stocks for illiquid stocks in a downturn? Well, it's part of our strategy. So in the coronavirus, 
uh, we concentrated our portfolio towards our highest conviction names. So the flagship portfolio got down to 33 names. As the bull market extended, we added names. It's up to 55 names. Uh, many of those names were much more liquid stocks. And so you're right, Sarah. Uh, when we get opportunities like this uh, to invest in pure plays instead of more mature plays, still innovation, uh, but more mature uh, and not as pure play, we will move back into pure play. Those are the more volatile names, of course. And uh, so we're getting great opportunities. And just to give you a sense of that, our minimum hurdle rate of return for any stock to enter our portfolio is 15% over a five-year period. So that's a doubling over five years. Now consider the source, but given the very sharp pullback we have had here recently, uh, Nothing's changed from our point of view on our long-term projections. Uh, so uh, what, the only thing that's changed is the rate of return. So a 25% rate of return over five years. So we're becoming more and more optimistic about our portfolios in the sell-off. We could, we could go through a number of stocks that, that you like and that are all high interest on the street, from Palantir to Square. Why don't, why don't you give us... Besides Tesla, which we know you're a big fan of and your, your conviction has increased there, what, where, which one you think is the most underappreciated name right now in, in your portfolio that you'd be looking to add positions to? Well, um, we just went through this this morning. Uh, Invite in the molecular diagnostic space is probably one of the most important companies in the genomic revolution. And it is getting hammered. Uh, you know, it's a, a company that has had uh, historically, small cash cushions, although they've, they've uh, rectified that with offerings, which is great. Um, but it's investing aggressively to be the leader in the molecular diagnostic uh, 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 testing space. Many people, the disconnect for many people here is when they think of lab tests, they think of LabCorp and Quest Diagnostics, which are effectively very mature companies, commoditized, value stocks. And so it is a little bit like uh, Tesla and the automobile uh, industry. Uh, the new lab tests, uh, uh, which are going to be informed by artificial intelligence and big data and supercomputing power, uh, are, going, are, we believe, in a winner-take-most market as we move into personalized medicine, much di different from one test for all, although we'll see multi-cancer screening certainly in that realm. But we think the move towards personalized testing is going to give just a few companies the lion's share of the market. Those companies with the most data, the highest quality data, and the best AI expertise. Kathy, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us Thank today. You. Thank you. Thank you, Wilfred and Sarah, very much.